Hey everyone, this is a frame inspection video and what we're going to do is that we're going to go through the engineering drawings and see if this frame complies with the engineering drawings and also the relevant Australian standards. Now, the builder has issued a frame invoice. Basically, the, the homeowner now has to pay for a frame stage payment. If the frame is non-compliant, should this owner pay the builder for a non-compliant frame? Let's go. This is a double story home and it's a fairly large home. Don't mind the mess. This is very common. All right, let's go in and take a look at this frame. Grab yourself a coffee or your favorite drink. And this is going to be one hell of a ride. Let's go and have a look at the engineering drawing. You can see here, this is the front area, this is the garage area, and you have all these letters and numbers together. For example, C2, see this is an opening, it goes to another C1, DS1, TS1, DS1, what are they? Make sure you go to a table, the member schedule, and if you scroll all the way down, C1, 89 by 89 by 5 SHS C2 is 89 by 89 by 6 mil For example here we have a C2 which is right there Then we have GL1 380 by 100 PFC Which is right there Then a C1 Right there which is right here. Have a look, have a look at that C1. It is literally just floating. An engineer needs to confirm the rectification method for this overhang. Another major item is this garage boundary wall. Let's take a closer look and see the plans. Now this line here is the boundary, the site boundary, which is right there. And then you can see here the dotted line, it says waterproof membrane by other. I'm not quite sure how they are going to waterproof now. Second item is the galvanized metal strap tie downs at 600 mil centers. Let's take a look and see what they are. It's currently at more than 600 mil. The tie downs must also be down a minimum of five brick courses. Let's take a look and see how many courses it is well they're currently at one two three four another item is that it can't hold more than 400 mil of soil let's take a look Wow. So this is the boundary here, which is a garage. You can see it right there on the plans. And then you can see the Aggie drain, AG, 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 AG. It goes to a pit. There's the Aggie drain. And they just left it dangling right there. No pit, nothing. There is also an Aggie drain on the opposite side and it goes into a pit as well, which is this side here. Let's take a look. No Aggie drain sticking out there and um, no pit. Well, let's take a look at this. We've got a C1, which is right there and it's carrying 
1B15, which is a double beam right there. That means there should be a connection from the steel column to a timber beam. Let's see what the engineering drawings shows. So this is the beam that butts into the steel column, as you can see. There's supposed to be a seat for the beam to sit on, and then also a cleat right there with three bolts, three M16 bolts to lintel. If we look at this steel column and look at this beam, there is nothing. It is just simply sitting there. The angle, you can see. Another issue as well, a C1, which is right there. And then we have one L8. One L8 is two 240, 45 beam, nail laminated. So if we look here, you can see two beams and they should be laminated together, but it's already opening. Look at that. Know that this is a timber beam connects to a steel column. Let's look at that detail again. So it specifies, you can see this is a timber beam and it's a steel column. It specifies a seat plate. There is no seat plate. There should be something like a little seat for the beams to sit on and it's not there. It'll also be three M16 bolts. These bolts are definitely not M16 bolts probably M12s or 10s even. For example, this is an M16 bolt. This, let's take a quick measure. Is an M12 bolt. Another issue is that how they've joined the top plates. These are some options on how to join the top plates together. The top plate, look how they've joined it. Other one here. The one here as well. The one here. Naughty naughty. It's a yes. Triple four zero. And this is a great detail of how you should brace onto the top plate. It says right there, fix with two nails to side and three nails under the top plate. Nails shall be not closer than 10 mil to the edge of the timber. Actually strap the trusses onto a stud. Now this is non-compliant. It should be tied to the top plate. Look at this. Also here, we obviously have a pipe relocation or something going on there. However, the slab has been cut. You can see the polystyrene right there. The steel at the bottom, there's no bar chairs. There is a modification of the steel which needs engineering certification in terms of the repair. These trusses all need support in case there's future movement. Let's take a closer look. That's common throughout. Now we have L4, which is a lintel that must not support any roof load. By placing those blocks Underneath the trusses right there, this lintel has now become load bearing. So when they load the roof, it's going to put weight on this beam. And the engineering states that it is not allowed to be load bearing. Now, let's take a look at the laundry here, which is here, right there. We have a C1, a steel column, right there, that carries... 1B10, which is that steel column up there. 
right there. And it's connected to the C1. And if we look again, it connects to another C1. All the way down here. Now, because they have packed up the wall here, they put some packers right there, which means it will take now the load. This wall here will be load bearing because it's not supposed to be load bearing. It's not suppo supposed to hold any weight as you can see here. If you take a look at this, there is a floor joist that is just not connected to nothing and is just sitting there for some unknown reason. There is also this beam that is carrying upstairs. It's only being supported by this small plate. So this is the, the beam that we're referring to, the big beam that's holding all of upstairs, which is right there. And this is the connection that I was concerned about. On B9 is a 380 by 100 mil PFC. So if we go to the table, 380 PFC. We have a table here of connections. It says here 380 PFC, three M20 bolts. Cleat plate should be a 10 mil thickness and also PFC should be the following. You should actually go and sit inside the other beam like that. This is the beam here. And we can see that this flange should be sitting inside this PFC. But they've obviously may have got this beam too short. So they've um, bolted three M20 bolts to a plate that's been welded to this beam. Now that has to be approved by the engineer because it's not per the engineering. And it is quite a big beam that's holding a lot of weight. Now this is a 3D extract from the actual engineer. He's got a QR code on his engineering plans and it shows the connection of the steel to steel connection. And they still can't get it right. So the base plates of the steel columns have not been done as per plan. Let's take a look. For example, this corner detail here, this is where the steel column sits. It's supposed to have a base plate like this on a corner. Corner, not as per engineering. Another corner. First floor, RL15 beam, supposed to be installed here. A double stud here and a double stud there. RL15 is a 150 by 45 beam. Let's take a look and see what they've installed. I knew I should have got an umbrella. It's just the top light. They must have run out of bolts. I'll take that back. Till next time.